Next up, we're going to do blue and purple silent. Um, we almost got to the ending with the last one, but not quite. Um, blue and purple. Yep, okay. All right. What are we doing for pathing? So this has um, four fights, which is a little too much. This has two fights, which is a little too low. Looking for three. That's the magic number. But this has uh, question marks and then a fire before the elite, which is really nice. We could get two elites if we feel really strong. Um, hey, Glitterfist. Thanks for the follow. Glitterfist47, is that like an AK-47? You're just like, Glitterfisting people. I like it. It's very evocative. Um, if we do this uh, two fight route, it's possible that this is our last easy pool fight, which makes this um, elite fight elite path a little easier. Um, and I would like to fight two elites in this act. That's one of the few ways to do it. Um, another way we could do it is we could go left and do this two fight path into elite fire elite, and then we're forced into a third elite. Um, that one's a little bit more um, more aggressive. Um, these decks tend to be really difficult to get started because um, you don't have a Niao bonus. Um, but, uh, but maybe we need to be aggressive to try and get off the ground so that we, uh, we don't die in Act 2. But we risk uh, dying in Act 1 if we take the 3 Elite route. Um, we could also get an easy pool fight up here, which is just hilarious. Um, seventh floor easy pool. Seems good. Or, um, third to last, which is not... There's not ten things in this act, so that's not how numbers work. Um, Silent is terrible at the early game, yes. Um, but this is a blue-purple Silent, so it's probably even worse. Um... Yeah, I guess the right path is the most responsible one. But it's like almost 11 o'clock, so let's let's make, take a really aggressive one. <laughs> I'm hungry. Um, Alright, we break both and block out. It's a good turn. Just really cranking down the power level here. We went from like a crazy infinite deck control hybrid thing to like breaking both louses on turn one. <laughs> um, okay. We could do Tranquility and try and be a stance change um, deck. Uh, stance changing is going to be really difficult given that we um, we have three class cards, three classes cards. So, um, um, oh my god, yeah, if we get zero cost stuff, we could get all for one, we could get like Weave, and like wrist blade and claw, um, silent is the. This is like the the perfect zero cost attack combo. This is like if you were designing a zero cost attack combo and you for some reason wanted it to be three classes, like these are the three classes. You'd be a silent, and you'd have these uh, these two. Um, okay, so how do we build around that? Let's do that. That sounds fun. Um, yeah. If we upgrade Tranquility, um, although Tranquility never goes into your discard, so drawing it with All for One is not really a possibility. Drawing it with Scrape is a possibility. Um, scrape Tranquility, what world are we living in? Um, you know what else costs zero? Insight. Insight also uh, draws two cards, so if we pick Claws, um, Insight would help us cycle through and get to them. Um, you could say the same thing about acrobatics. Acrobatics helps you draw cards and get to your claws and stuff. But evaluate blocks while it's doing it. So I think we'll take evaluate here. We are going to die. We're going to die so fast. Um, I can't imagine money being useful to this character. But maybe if we go here, uh, we will need the money. So, okay. It is a floor two golden idol, so you should probably take it. Um, 
Do we evaluate or survivor? I think we survivor. Keep some health. We're doing at least one of each. Um, Jaw worm blocks for five, is that right? So if we strike him, he's at effectively 20 next turn. I think we need to get in the damage. I'll take two. It is five. I almost consulted the wiki and then I was like, I've fought a lot of jaw worms. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that whatever I assume it is subconsciously is what it is. Um, I can't do anything cool this turn, so I might as well block out and develop an insight. We can proc our imaginary ink bottle. It's our vestigial ink bottle from last run. Uh, we probably want to kill him this turn. Oh, we have the damage to kill him right now. We don't need to rely on insight. Okay. Uh, Rip and Tear is great. It doesn't cost zero, but um, it does strength scale, and it's just good. Um, yeah, I think we take Rip and Tear over these one other ones. Rip and Tear is a little bit weak at sentries. Um, but that's okay. Barrage. <laughs> um, we can't afford this. We're about to go fight three elites. No, thank you. We're literally forced into three elites is, is our next th three fights. Well, at least we had um, we had optional health loss ones, so we get to save all of our health and go into some elite fights we're totally unprepared for. Um, apparently, we're blocking out because we can't do anything else fun. Um, I think we're just going to use the neutralize to go for damage because we get to a, a little modulus six equals zero breakpoint. Apologize for the. Sudden math talk. Nobody was expecting that. We could liquid memories are neutralize or evaluate to block. I think I like liquid memories on evaluate. Ooh, we could liquid memories on survivor. We could double survivor and then double strike. Yeah, math is necessary in the game. The word modulus is not necessary. People could go their whole lives and not, not hear that word. Um, yeah, I think I like Double Survivor. In the absence of something better to do. If we liquid... I don't know what we mean by if we liquid. Uh, let's hope Rip and Tear hits the back guy. I think him once is a pretty good outcome, I think. Um, I think we strike defend. And then we're looking for a... Um, looking for a strike next turn. We didn't find one, so let's use insight. Crap, we still didn't find one. Thanks for the follow, Zaki. Appreciate it. Welcome to the stream. I guess we're taking ten. We got extremely unlucky there. And I would say, given how aggressive our route is... Um, taking 10 on that turn is pretty likely to cost us the run. If we are being honest with ourselves. Um, we can't draw a neutralize again next turn. So um, I think we're going to favor removing the, um, the artifact charge. Um, we do get rid of 5 days, but it's not generally how you win this fight. <laughs> um, I think I favor removing the artifact charge over um, doing three damage to sentry. Um, in general, yeah, we should do damage to front one, um, but neutralize potentially blocks, and pretty much all of our damage is strikes. We've only added two cards to the deck, one of which we can't target, um, and the other one of which is a block card. Um, and since all of our damage is strikes, um, we take the front sentry goes from 36 to 33. Which is both, uh, which is seven strikes in both situations, or uh, six strikes in both situations. Um, so we should neutralize it. It doesn't, um, it doesn't cross a breakpoint, but um, we have the potential to neutralize him on his next attack turn. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay, well, evaluate is super good in the fight um, because it helps us even out our turns. Um, and then let's punch the front one 
I don't think we're going to be able to kill him before the next time he attacks. But it is, um, it is technically possible. Um, so it's not all the same, all win. So the reason we the reason we removed the debuff is this turn we could have redrawn neutralize, and if we had redrawn neutralize instead of say the strike, it would have blocked for two because we would have been able to weaken him because now his artifact charge is gone. So we put the neutralize on this guy, planning to put two neutralizes on him eventually. Um, we can't spend all of our energy this turn, so let's try and draw something where we can. We overdrew a little bit. Which is too bad. Um, I think I like Strike Strike Survivor here. Um, if we happen to draw two strikes next turn, which is actually pretty unlikely, um, we uh, we do block for ten. Evaluate Survivor is full block. Um, yeah, we'd have to skip a strike to do it, and skipping strike hurts a lot. Um, Also, if we double strike him, we have a 25% out with just rip and tear. Yeah, we're getting getting really dazed here. Um, I don't think we're gonna make it. Um, yeah, three elite route with no Niao bonus and only uh, only two cards. It's uh. Probably unwise. Um, yeah, I think we have to. We have to hope that we're gonna block. We're gonna miraculously block for ten next turn with two strikes. Um, almost. Um, yeah, neutralize coming up the wrong time here. That's brutal. Um, wow. If we had targeted the front one with neutralize, despite the fact that I talked about it a bunch, if we targeted the front one with neutralize, we would have been able to kill him right now. Would have blocked for ten. So we got it wrong, despite thinking about it, and I think doing the right thing. Um, it, uh, it really, really got punished for it. Yikes. Yep, this is how you lose. This is how you lose the sentries. Too slow. Oh my god. Um, wow. That's pretty much the opposite of drawing two strikes the next turn. It's drawing... Two strikes, never. Thanks for bringing all the damage in on one turn. Uh, that actually worked out pretty well. We still can theoretically win this fight. That's a good start. Just one more strike. Okay, that works too. <laughs> We're winning this fight. We're guaranteed it now. Wow. Unbelievable. What did we did we take like fifty damage in that fight? We took like fifty two damage. <laughs> um Okay. All of these are terrible against Gremlin Knob. Um We they're also terrible against Logvulin. Um <laughs> uh, we could take beam cell because it's good with with all for one <laughs> um, you know beam cell rip and tear is probably the only way we're killing um, gremlin knob maybe phantasmal killer we could phantasmal killer on turn one and then like rip and tear double strike and maybe kill him I never take phantasmal killer so I don't even know what the upgrade does let's take phantasmal killer I think it's the only way we're winning uh, against Gremlin Nub. So let's give it a shot. It's also kind of good against Log Villain, right? You set it up and then you break him with it. Okay. Um, the deck disagrees. The deck says, wake him up right now. You got Rip and Tear and Strike. Rip and Tear, Double Strike. Um, I guess we just go for a shuffle, though. Wake him up with the uh, Phantasmal Killer. We also have a chance to exhaust um, Ascender's Pain. Hmm, I guess it's never going to be as good, huh? We're going to wake him up with, like, one strike if we wait for Phantasmal Killer. No, if we get really lucky, we can get Phantasmal Killer and Ascender's Bane next turn. And then the turn after that, we can get Strike, Strike, Rip and Tear. Uh, 
Um, we missed it. Oh, we can we can get it with insight maybe. We can insight for Phantasmal Killer. Oh shoot. <laughs> okay. Well, at least we uh, exhausted Ascender's Vein. That's something. Um, I think we just Phantasmal Killer, and then just let him wake up. <laughs> Yikes. Alright, zero damage wake up. Seems terrible. Um, that's good though. Um, okay, so we need to block for a total of 17 over the next two turns to survive. Um, we can block for five with neutralize next turn and three with survivor, and then we can block with evaluate. So next turn is probably neutralize, defend, evaluate, strike. Um, so we need the extra damage now. Okay. We're surviving next turn. Um, and I don't know what kind of miracle we could possibly get. Um... Doesn't seem like we're getting there. Um, we'd need to block for 13 to survive this turn, and we can't. Um, okay, well. Silent. Silent in Act 1 with no Neo bonus. I barely even made it to 11. I, I was like, I think I could probably do one more run. <laughs> let's, let's take a really aggressive route. <laughs> no. Um... That's it. Well, I don't think that's a particularly good combo. Uh, I'm not super excited about f being forced into doing a shiv slash claw stuff, but that seems to be the synergy here, is like take a bunch of zero cost attacks and try and find a wrist blade or something. Um, 